Welcome to our discussions on the financial statements relevance with a focus on the liquidity position. In the last discussion, we saw and we gave our attention on uh, the current ratio. We saw that current ratio has certain limitations. The limitations are its excess focus on the quantity and also the possibilities of window dressing. And we said that if these two limitations have to be addressed, then there is a need to bring in other additional ratios like liquid ratio, like absolute cash ratio. But even if you do this adjustments or add on these ratio, there are other problems. The other problem is the excess focus on the quantity and ignoring the quality of the composition of the current assets and current liability. And this can be addressed by bringing in some efficiency ratios like stock inventory ratio, which is also called inventory days or debtors turnover ratio, which is also called debtor days and the creditors turnover ratio, which is called the creditor days. In other words, if you combine the current ratio with the liquid ratio, absolute current ratio, inventory days, debtor days and creditor days together, one can get a re relatively robust understanding about the liquidity position. So, let us see what is this debtor days. The debtor's days can be explained in a different manner. The easiest way to understand is, is the number of days of sales remaining as an outstanding as on the date of preparing the financial statements. So, if the balance sheet is prepared on 31st March 2008 suppose, so on that day the debtors which are there on a balance sheet on average how many days of sales are remaining as a debtor. To make it very simple, suppose the sales per year is 3650. So, sales per day is about 10. So, if the debtors are about 500 groups, then 50 days of sales is said to be remaining as an outstanding on the date of preparing the balance sheet. So, 50 days is a debtor days. So, in principle, the credit policy, the time that you want to give it to the debtor can be reflected by the debtor days. Now, debtor days per se as a standalone will not make any meaningful understanding about or will not show anything much about the uh, financial statements or will not say much about the credit policy. It is necessary to see the change in the debtor days over a period of time. Suppose, I want to compare debtor days of company X. I should see what was the debtor days in the preceding accounting time period? Is it rising or is it falling? If it is falling, why is it falling? Is it falling because of good collection or is it falling that you have stopped selling the goods on credit? That is one. The other one is observe and compare the debtor days with the creditor days. Even if you have a high or a low debtor days, but to make it meaningful, let it is necessary to compare it with a creditor day. Creditor days is a period that I can negotiate with my suppliers. So, if my creditor days and the debtors days are taken together, then I know how I am managing my suppliers credit and the customers credit. For example, if a company A is having a debtor days of 50, that means on average I have to wait for 50 days to collect back my money. But if the industry average is about uh, 30, it is possible that I am not very efficient. But I can say that in my company, if my creditor days is about 60, that means I am able to negotiate a deal with the creditor to wait for 60 days, then does not matter even if the credit debtor days of my company is higher than the industry average. Because I am collecting the money on average after 50 days and I am actually able to pay the money to the cost to the suppliers after 60 days. So, I am having some leverage of that cash that I have collected from the customer. So, the point that I want to drive in here, compare the creditors days with the debtor days to get an understanding about the quality of the debtors and the quality of the creditor. Similarly, you have to bring in the inventory days. Inventory days shows the number of days of sales uh, are remaining in the form of stock. So, inventory days can be computed by saying that the inventory
entry on the date of preparing the balance sheet divided by sales per day. To make it bit better, we can say that cost of goods sold per day. So, cost of the goods sold is equal to sales minus the gross profit. What is this number trying to tell us? Again, the number per se has no meaning, but if you compare the number with the past, with the industry, with the changes over a period of time, it might give us some idea so, about the management of inventory. Am I storing more than what is required? I am having inventory which is not necessary. So, therefore, any of these ratios have to be compared with the industry over, over a period of time, my own company's behavior over a period of time. Now, let us combine them all of them together. So, debtors days plus inventory days minus creditors days is going to give me some idea about the operating cycle of a company. The operating cycle is a reflection of the credit policy, the operation cycle is a reflection of the working capital and operating cycle is a reflection of the liquidity position of a company. To summarize, I can say that the current ratio along with the liquid ratio, absolute current ratio, debtor days, creditor days and inventory days together will definitely throw some light on the inventory management, debtors management and liquidity position along with giving us an idea that the ability of the company to meet the short term liabilities of that particular company. But there is other angle, the other side to this picture is how is a company managing or financing its assets, which we will see through the concept of working capital in our next discussion. Thank you very much.